You're actually not supposed to shake them. Hi everyone! Today's video was inspired by none other than the average artist who made a video last week painting over old photos. I thought this was really fun and I wanted to do it myself. I was this close to going to the store and printing some photos and then I remembered this lovely fat stack of instant pictures that didn't come out so I thought I would paint over them. There's a lot of reasons why these photos didn't come out from my camera being old and crappy to the film being in early development to me not knowing how to use the camera right. I kept these thinking that I could use them for whatever reason and here I am using them so I'm excited to paint on them so let's see what I can come up with. Here we go. I wanted to start off playing around with the image I took at the beginning of this video, but I am not at all surprised that this image did not turn out because I have had this film pack for over a year now and this film is kind of finicky because it's not actually made by Polaroid. With that said, I guess I will explain all of this film stuff before I start talking about the drawing. The film I use for my Polaroid camera is made by the company called The Impossible Project and I have been buying film from them for about six or seven, maybe seven years at this point. They started making film for Polaroid cameras a while ago because Polaroid stopped making their instant film and they wanted to continue making it. But there's a lot of chemicals and a lot of science that goes into making this film because it's, it's instant film, there's a lot of chemicals involved, and they had to start from scratch because of course Polaroid wasn't just going to give them the ingredients and how to make this film. So they started from scratch, they started to make this film, and because of that they have to go through a lot of trial and error to get the same quality of film that Polaroid was making a while ago. So a lot of this film that I have, a lot of the ones that are really messed up are mainly my fault. I have another camera called the SX70 and it's a camera that you can get really close up with things. So the camera you saw me use at the beginning of this video was a 600 camera and you can only get as close as six feet for the focus for that camera. But with the SX70 you can get, I think it's six inches or something like that. You can get really close, which is why I liked having two different cameras because you can get close with one and another one is just a lot easier to use. I had a lot of trouble taking pictures with my SX70 because it was really light sensitive and you had to adjust that and I was constantly wasting film and the pictures just weren't turning out right so eventually I just had to stop buying film for my SX70 and I now just buy film for my 600. But like I said, this film is over a year old so I am not surprised the picture turned out bad which is why I wanted to take a picture to draw on from the get-go and of course I drew myself standing there as if I am filming a video so I thought that was pretty cute. Even with the background being kind of bluish, I think it really fit in with my character really popping out with good colors, so I think it's cute. It was a good practice little drawing to do, but I have to say I learned a lot about the way these materials work on the surface. Because like I said, I learned how the materials work after I had jumped into a finished piece, I was like, you know what, I need to do a more simple piece and learn how to maybe work around that because I think acrylic paint would have worked a lot better on this slippery sort of surface. But I just wasn't committed to going out and buying acrylics for this single project. I don't, I don't think acrylics are something that I would really want to use a lot. I think I would want to try them one day, but I wasn't really committed to trying them out at the moment, so I thought I would just suffer through using my gouache on these. I don't think they turned out too bad using a material that didn't quite work with the surface. The thing is, with photo paper, it's very slippery and the gouache is water-based, so when you put it down on the surface, it just kind of pools and kind of separates from each other. So it wasn't a huge problem, it only kind of had a problem with it a few times here and there, but for the most part, it was okay. So of course I had to make a goofy face because that's what I do and I really enjoy these really simple and goofy faces on objects like a Polaroid. And it's very sad because maybe the Polaroid is sad because instead of testing the materials to see how they worked before I used them, I just jumped right in. Remember kids, always test your materials on new surfaces or your new materials on old surfaces to see how they work. Don't follow what I do, I'm a poo-poo.
And then I did another goofy face because I couldn't resist. Like I said, I just really like to put these weird faces on things, especially inanimate objects. It's a lot of fun. Especially when they look very uncomfortable because I don't know why I like uncomfortable faces, but it's fun to see these objects being tortured for some reason. I also wanted to make sure that this black frame had some color on it, so I made sure that it was very blue and sickly looking, and then I gave it a pink mouth. The previous one had a white frame, and I thought it would be really good to make the interior black so that it really contrasted the frame. So I'm trying to do that a little bit with the black frame to have the white and the blue on the inside, and I just wanted to make another simple face because I like to do it. But I think it is time to start pushing my ideas a little bit more and having some more fun with the gouache. So let's get into more complicated drawings. So you can't see the color of the frame on this one, but it's a light blue. And I thought it would be really fun to make the inside of this picture to be a little bit more colorful to complement that light blue frame. I don't know why, but it really made me want to use a very bright green, so I wanted to put a plant in there. Just a very simple potted plant, and of course, I had to put an ant in there as well. Did you think you were going to get through another Casey video without an ant? No, I don't think so. It's been too long since I've put an ant in my videos, so here it is, an ant. So this is yet another very simple illustration, but I really like my simple illustrations. I just like when things are very shapely and clean cut and I like it, what can I say? So although this is very simple, I do like that gray and the white and the way it goes with the blue frame and I like this little tiny piece, it's very cute. With this piece, again, you can't see it, but it has a black frame. So I wanted to make sure that the inside of this picture was very colorful. And this time I wanted to do something that was inspired by the weird pattern that was inside the frame. The reason why some of these images have this weird block of brown, this weird goopy abstract thing at the bottom, is because if it got jammed in my SX-70 and it didn't come out all the way, or if it just simply didn't come out of the camera and I had to open it up and take it out, you were able to squeeze the chemicals that are stored at the bottom of the image and kind of just like squeeze them out and they would form this abstract blobby thing down there. Because when a instant film is pushed out through the camera, a roller squeezes this juicy chemical thing across the photo and that is what enables the photo to develop. So when it doesn't come out properly, you're able to just kind of squeeze the pouches and create this abstract thing. So like I said, I did want to create an image that was sort of inspired by that shape. And there were a couple of options I had. And with this piece originally, I was thinking about making a sort of desert piece. So that line I followed could be the sand and then the sky could be at the top. But in the end, for some reason, I really wanted to do a coral because coral is very bright. And like I said, I wanted to go against that black frame. I used the base shape to kind of create this really bright piece in there and then I decorated it with some more coral and I really like this effect a lot. The part that I'm going to call the sky, which is really the rest of the ocean, it almost has this 3D effect to it because with these frames there's a clear piece on top and then under it is another piece. So you can kind of see this sort of 3D effect with it and it just, it looks really cool and I like it. So I was pleasantly surprised with this piece. The only thing I wish I did differently was that I wish I made a gradient on the yellow go from light on the top to darker on the bottom. That way it kind of created a sort of depth down there and right now it's just kind of looking flat. So womp womp, the only thing I wish I could change. Other than that, I like it. The last piece I did, I wanted to play around with something coming out of the image and breaking the frame. Because as you guys know, I love it when my pictures break the frame. I don't know why a snake was the first and only thing that came to my mind, but my original idea was having someone hold a snake and that snake was going to be hanging down out of the frame onto the bottom. But I didn't feel like drawing a hand because phew, who likes to draw hands? So I just put the snake on a branch thing and called it a day. 
So with this piece, I wanted to color the snake a very bright yellow color because the frame is this sort of turquoise, turquoise. Wow, I suddenly forgot how to say turquoise. And now I forgot what I was saying. So the frame is a turquoise. So I wanted to make the snake a very bright yellow because I thought that would kind of go along with it a little bit. Thought it'd be a cool color combination. So I made this bright yellow snake breaking the frame onto this lovely turquoise colored frame. And to be honest, I don't really have much to say about this one. I kind of feel meh about it. It's cool that it's breaking the frame, but I don't really have a connection with snakes and the image is kind of boring, but it's kind of cool the way it's breaking the frame. I guess that's all it has going for it, huh? Sorry, drawing. So here's a poll. Which of these images is your favorite? As usual, thank you so much for watching. Have fun painting on your own images. Thanks again to The Average for giving me this wonderful idea. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much to all of my patrons, including Michael Young, Zach Abstract, Lex CS, Shelby, Teresa, Megan, Lozo, Danielle Firecracker, Chris Side, Davy Tomato, Jane, Cool Guy Josh, Mina Blix, Dad, Bumblebean, and Mooney. If you want a shout out at the end of my videos, access to my sketchbook, coloring pages, and more, become my patron by clicking the link in the description. Thank you all so much for the support. Bye. Bye.